Hey hey, welcome back to the channel. It's awesome that you're tuning in. So in this video, we're going to get on a new hype train, or I think this is going to be a hype train. This product is called the Datafrog SF2000. And basically what you're going to get with this is a very low budget product where we can play a lot of different retro games with. In the past, we have seen many different products from Pow Kitty and some other brands. And the thing is, I am really curious about what are we going to get. So when it comes to the looks of this device, I'm just going to be honest, this thing looks pretty damn cool. It getting some real nostalgia retro vibe because this thing looks like a Super NES controller. Man, and I can tell you the first thing I'm noticing when holding it, Wow, this thing is quite comfortable, and the reason why it's even more comfortable than the original controller is due to the form factor. It looks kind of weird at the back when you're going to hold it like this, but it feels so much more comfortable than your typical Super Nintendo controller. I can already tell you the D-pad itself, ooh, it does have like a very cheap click to it, so I don't know if this is going to be playing very nicely. It does have a very nice curve to it that gives it more ergonomic. <laughs> they did make a decision to add a joystick to it and I must say the position is not super bad. But when holding the handheld in your hand and trying to play like this, I can tell you this is not going to be a bad thing. The position is kind of strange, it's just next to the display itself. But when you're holding it and playing all of this, it's not bad at all. But when it comes to the buttons, this is something you don't see very often. And I mean not like this minor difference when it comes to the height of both buttons. No, it's particularly like the way how they look and how they play. Normally when having a controller, we do have like very high buttons that you have a long travel, but they made a decision to create a more like a flat surface this way. Is it super comfortable? I don't know, to be honest. But it is a quite interesting choice. Then of course, when the select and start are rubberized like with a lot of the original controllers. But on top we're going to get ourselves to shoulder buttons. The shoulder buttons are very clickish and not to the point I'm thinking hey they are like really cheap to the cheap cheap. No not bad at all when you're holding it and you just want to use the shoulder buttons. You do need to put a little bit force in to click them. They should like change it out to different let's say resistance when it comes to the micro switch button or a different configuration. Not bad. For the money we can basically complain. But let's take a close look at the connections. Because here we do have some options. We have a very tiny jack output volume control then over here we do have the micro sd card slot then over here we do have like the type c and we have over here the on and off switch yeah doesn't do anything so i think i need to charge it hmm but at the back we're going to find the battery compartment and only one speaker you would say maybe there are two but it's a little bit deceiving because when you're looking closely there is nothing Behind it, a little bit of bummer, it would be cool to have like stereo sound in a device like this. The battery is our all famous 1800 650, it's only a 50 milliamp, you can upgrade it if you want to. But interesting, they made a choice for this. So let's charge it up, and it also gives quite a weight to the device itself. But we're going to get more inside the package itself. It's going to be a, the AV out cable, yup, it's old school, no HDMI for the money, you cannot really expect that. And of course the cable, there is no power supply, you need to get yourself like a basic phone charger. And then of course the toilet manual deluxe, that gives you an explanation how everything works. But I also go to explain and show you in this video. So let's go. But how about the display? First of all, let's remove the screen protector. Is this the idea that I wanted to do? Did I just mess it up or what? I have no idea. <sighs> I don't know what's going on with those screen detectors. To be honest, whatever. Oh. But let's power up the device itself. Over here we have the indication for the LED. You can see when it's charging or turned on. We're going to get ourselves the welcome text. And that's it, this is the menu itself. And oh yeah, we're going to get ourselves the funky music. But the first thing I've noticed is that there comes quite a nice volume out of the device itself. The interface is super basic. I want to say it's going to be a very good experience when it comes to a certain part, but what I do like about this thing, we're just grabbing it out of the box, it's just plug and play and certain way that you can just, like everybody can use this. It's not like a complex menu that I've seen before. For example, if you want to press MAME, going into the MAME list, you can boot up a game like this. It's super easy how to navigate through this device itself. But when you're into the gameplay itself, you just want to go back to the main menu. You can press both select and start and they will give you this basic menu where you just have resume, quit and make a quick load and quick save. And I think it is very convenient and this way you can just go back to the main menu. So the way the navigation goes, it's super easy. Let's 
lower the volume a little bit. Next thing that we're going to do is let's say getting into the big list. So far I understand there is no way of changing the thumbnails. It's kind of a weird thing they're always doing with these systems, but everything looks so much better and smoother. Let's say we're getting into the main, pressing the start over here. It will bring you in the big menu. From this point on, you can go back pressing select. So navigation through the system is super easy. So this is basically the TV out option where you can set to a certain region. We're going to test it out later. Language, search, and the game list. So when you're going to add new games from this point, you can just basically add new games. We also have this, let's say the search function. And the search function is super convenient. Let's say I'm searching for Sonic. Then go to OK. And here we can find every single file that has Sonic in its name. So that's a super convenient and a super easy way to find your games. So the unfortunate thing with this device is, and that we've seen many times before with low budget devices, that when it comes to emulation performance, we do have some problems. You can really hear that it is stuttering. Some movements are going to be very choppy. Also, the SPS ratio is not like it should be. But you can just hear this game is unplayable. And with the system, we can go back to the menu. But beside that, there's nothing else we can do about it. So when it comes to GBA, hmm. But let's move on to the Sega Genesis or Mega Drive. But here you can see that the emulation performance is as it should be. Did a little bit weird thing going on with audio. But so far so good. Ooh, did he hear some minor hiccup over there? Here we do have like some audio issues when you're grabbing the rings, and I think that is maybe the problem with only having one speaker. There is something going on over here. Another great test what we can do is going into the three-dimensional part, but that seems to be working just fine. Some emulators, if they don't have the right one set up, it will look absolutely messed up. So when it comes to that, it's not perfect, but it is in my opinion playable. Getting into main, we do have some loading times going on. Of course, time for some beefcake and dinosaurs. Well, let's check out how the quality of this is. A cheap device like this, surprisingly, that's an amazing audio. Okay, you see there, there were no sound effects. All right, let's move to the joystick. But also here, like with the Mega Drive, the overall performance. But when it comes to the audio, it's not going to be Perfect there. Next up, let's try some Super Famicom with Bob. But already from the start, I can hear some minor problems. No oh, sound effects are here so far. Normally I'm always like a big fan of the D-pad, but I'm just gonna be honest, the cheap clicky feeling, it's not for me. I do personally prefer the joystick when it comes to playing these games. To also mention in the beginning, the position is very comfortable. So when it comes to the overall gameplay, if you just want to play some adventure games with the joystick, and I don't see that often, I'm very satisfied with this. Let's get into the classic games. Now I will, when I need to press the D-pad a lot, I do notice that it is not perfect and I do really hate it. And didn't even start with the freaking fighting games. Oh man. But let's get into the Famicom part, what I do like about the controls that have been configured. So we're having the normal buttons and also an implemented of the turbo button, so that's kind of cool. 
but so far I can see the overall performance of NES is just great. The volume is a little bit lower when comparing it with different emulators, but it's not bad at all. Oh yeah! They are claiming using an IPS display in this and I think there is something about this that they really don't lie about it because it looks pretty damn good. But what is also interesting that they made the decision to lower the display and it gives us a little bit of an let's say, gap between the front glass and the display itself and gives us a very nice let's say, gaming experience when you're looking at this. But let's try the AVO function, that's something I really want to try out. My display can rec not really recognize the signal that's coming out of the device. So let's check it out and set it to Paul, let's see if this actually works. Yep, and you can see the flickering over now, so it does indeed basically switches to Paul and the other systems. Okay. So in this case we can go all full retro mode, you need to be careful if you're going to bounce the cable or just touch it, it's going to be like having some interference sometimes. The next thing I wanted to check out, so can we actually like play on a CFT and how is the freaking deep eye working for fighting games? The touch is absolutely horrible, I already mentioned a couple of times in this video. Yeah, so I was afraid of this. The D-pad is absolutely garbage. It has such a bad input, so we just need to use the freaking analog stick. But all the other parts of the controller, or is it the handheld and the control is absolutely amazing. Oh, there we go, there we go, there we go. Oh man, oh man. Oh. oh I'm getting my ass whooped here. There we go. Oh yeah. Oh man, you do hear a lot of interference. Oh. oh. One of the big improvements when it comes to the TV out, when you're going to plug in the cable, it will automatically transmit the signal of the display to your television. And pulling it out, it basically goes where you just left your game system. So when it comes to that feature, they did an amazing job. The only thing I'm missing out is HDMI. But for the money, I think we cannot really complain about that. A device for a dirty cheap price. A great, very nice looking LCD display. Comfortable. But of course there was always something that you mess up and I don't want to be negative but the thing is that it comes with a pretty damn bad D-pad. Makes fighting games unplayable, it feels dirty cheap. What makes up that we do have like a very nice looking and very nice of playable like joystick but for me as a D-pad guy I am disappointed in this. The menu I'm hoping we can get yourself like an upgrade in the future because if you're going to improve these two things it will be a great deal for the money. Thank you for watching, let me know in the comments what you think of this and it will be great to see you in the next video.